This week is Halloween week, everything's spooktacular. And in my clips today, I've got some clips of a fantastic house, of a friend's house. She adorns it brilliantly every year and even slows the traffic down because people try to watch what she's actually put outside the house. And the other clips are down the local high street and also a bit of information on where witchcraft comes from and pumpkins. And I got the information from the local National Trust property because they put the information out, so I photographed it and uh, hence passed it on. So, hope you enjoy the clips, hope you have a great week, and yeah, happy uh, Halloween! Halloween. Traditionally, Halloween began as an ancient pagan festival called Sawen, meaning summer's end. The festival marked the end of the autumn and the beginning of the most terrifying season of all for many ancient communities, winter. To celebrate Samhain, Druids would often build huge bone fires from slaughtered cattle, which later became known as bonfires, and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. To keep away spirits, masks were worn and bells were rung. Burning torches was also carried to ward off evil spirits. By AD 43, the Roman Empire conquered Celtic lands and combined two festivals with the traditional celebration of Samhain. The first was Feralia, a day to commemorate the passing of the dead. The second was to honour Pomona, the Roman goddess of trees and fruit. The symbol of Pomona is the apple, which is believed to have inspired the tradition of bobbing for apples that many people take part in on Halloween. In medieval times, this game was often played during Samhain. Young singletons would try to bite an apple floating in water with the belief that the first to take a bite would be the next to get married. Witchcraft. In the past, witches were believed to deal in dark magic and have supernatural powers given to them through a pact made with the devil. If your apples began to rot, witch. If disease spread around your village, witch. Your animals fell ill, well, it could only be a witch. 
Nightmare Neighbours. In the medieval times, if people did suspect their neighbour was a witch, they would make sure to always have the last word in a conversation. If not, they believed the witch could use her powers to control them. They also believed that you should never let the witch give you food. Fearsome familiars. Usually, a witch would have a familiar, which was often a small animal, who would act out the witch's commands and spy on others. The most common familiar was the cat, but they could also be toads, a housefly or even hedgehogs. Witches would often be depicted with these animals. And did you know, some people believed witches' familiars were actually the witches themselves, who could shapeshift and then venture outside to cause mayhem and mischief. Witchcraft. Often when people hear the word witch, they think of dark magic. However, in medieval Britain, cunning folk or white witches were accepted in most villages as healers. These healers used different plants and herbs as remedies and cures. They would often be called upon to use charms to help grow crops grow and protect livestock or to ward off evil spirits. They could also be asked to help find lost goods. A witch doesn't have to be female either and certainly doesn't need a pointy hat or a broomstick. In England, most who were accused of witchcraft were women. However, in Scandinavian countries, men were accused more often than women. Across Europe, around 6,000 men were executed for witchcraft. And I'll let you read the rest. are a familiar sight over the Halloween period. But why do we carve pumpkins and what does it have to do with a mysterious character called Stingy Jack? Each year the UK grows around 10 million pumpkins. Most of these end up being purely carved for Halloween and then disposed of. However, pumpkin is highly nutritious and can be used in lots of tasty recipes. Why not try making some pumpkin pie or a nice warming pumpkin soup? The tale of Stingy Jack is an Irish folklore of Stingy Jack was believed to have carved the way for the use of jack-o'-lanterns during Halloween. Stingy Jack liked to fool the devil, so much so that he managed to trick the devil into banning him from hell. However, his trickster behaviour also meant he was banned from entering heaven, so he was forced to travel the afterlife with just a lit coal for light, with which Stingy Jack decided to pop inside a carved-out turnip. Now, turnips or pumpkins. Carving turnips then became part of Irish traditions during Halloween to keep Stingy Jack and other troublesome spirits away. When Irish settlers went over to America, they found that pumpkins were easier to carve, and so the carving of pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns was formed. And did you know, here in England, we originally carved the turnip, or what we call as mangle wurzels which are large versions of turnips.